again. Um, this is uh, part of the Skill Centre at Home uh, series that we've been doing now for the past 10, 12 weeks. Um, my name's Colin Way. Uh, behind the camera today we've got Finlay. Charlie is uh, decided to go swimming today, so he's taking it easy. Finn's behind the camera. Um, today is uh, slightly different. If you remember last week we ended with an outdoor um, look at starter lathes. Today we're going to do a project for you, so something for you to do. Um, it's a two-parter, so we're going to um, we're going to uh, do part of the process today. You're going to finish it on uh, on Thursday, and then the journey really starts. Then it's down to decoration. So I think we better show you what we're going to do. Um, I promise. I'm only going to mention this word once. I'm not going to mention it ever again after this. Um, but this is a project that I would do around the Christmas time. There, done, said. We're not going to mention it at all. Um, so with that in mind. Um, being hot and sunny and lovely outside, we're going to change it slightly. So instead of doing something related to that time of year, um, we're going to make either a wood turner or um, a farmer. You could do a nurse, a doctor, um, whatever you want. But they're basically going to be incense burners um, or Rauschemann, uh, the Germans call them. They, 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 they originate from that part of the, uh, the world. Um, traditionally, they're put up uh, in Advent um, or... or to, to scare away all the nasty um, spirits. So you burn the incense and that um, sort of gives luck to the household. So Finn, can you just pass me those two pictures there? So this is a couple of um, uh, excerpts from the Wood Journey magazine uh, where I've done this as an article. So we're gonna be making that one there. So Finn, direct me, let's get that in shot. Is that okay? So there's our wood turning Rauschemann. Okay, the incense cone goes in the middle, so we're going to show you how to make it. But just to give you an idea, here's one of the farmers or cider pickers um, that I've also made. Um, but you can soon see, you know, pretty much whatever you want to do, um, you can. Okay, it's a basic pattern. Um, that pattern, um, or wood list, wood cutting list, we will be adding to the uh, knowledge blog on the Axminster website. So at the moment, I'm going to be working to a plan that I that will actually Finn done for me. I gave him the measurements, he put it onto CAD um, and, uh, and, and drew that up. So we're going to get that out there for you to see. That's going to go on the knowledge blog probably Monday. If we can get it there before the weekend, brilliant, but I think it's going to be Monday to be fair. But that's not going to stop you because I'm going to give you all the measurements as we go through this first section. So grab yourself a pen and paper um, and I'll give you the measurements. Okay, so I'm going to work with what I've got here. Now, we're not going to be able to do every single part of this project straight away today. Um, and the painting, of course, is going to be down to you to go away and do. So we're going to want to see some pictures again of uh, finished work. Um, but basically, we're going to look at doing, if I hold both these pictures up together. So we're gonna look at doing, maybe coming a little bit closer, Finn, so I'm not stretching too much. So we're gonna be doing today, um, the base, the feet, the legs. Uh, we're gonna do the body, and then underneath the body is the actual incense holder, the, 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 um, the little round piece that holds the incense cones. Um, so we're gonna do that main torso. That's gonna leave for Thursday the arms um, so the shoulder pads, the arms, head hats and tools and lathe as well. So there's quite a lot to do. Um, if I if I get to the point where I think, oh, we've got a few minutes left, then we'll do an extra bit today just to, just to keep us going. But there's some nice turning in there. Um, it's a bit of fun. Um, and that's what, uh, that's what it's supposed to be about, our wood turning. So let's get started. Um, now, I've done a fair bit of preparation. You know I'd, I tend to, to, to get prepped up so we can condense these uh, demonstrations into an hour. Um, so this is my preparation so far. So we're going to start off, and don't worry, we'll guide you through this bit at a time. Don't forget, though, pen and paper would help you at the moment just so we can write down some of these, these um, sizes. So we're going to start off with the base. So the base I've prepped up by, and I've prepped up for several, and I would encourage you to do the same thing because... Um, if we can, you know, while you're doing one of these sections, there's an awful lot of moving around of chucks and things like that. So why are you doing one? You might as well do two or three, and you can make a series of different um, different characters, for instance. So I've got three bases set up here. Um, I've got a couple of sets of legs, a couple of sets of arms, loads of feet, loads of bodies, that sort of thing. So we can we can really start working. So 
Here we are, this is my quick and easy way to get the base started. So this is a piece of maple here, and I've got a piece of um, a tulip hot milk glued on. So that's gonna be our sacrificial hold point. Um, I'll do the base, we'll do a little recess that we can expand into, sand and polish, turn them over and do the top. So very, very simple bits of turning this are. So great, great little beginner projects um, or something to do with the kids if they wanna get involved uh, making these little characters. So usual thing when it comes to safety, we're gonna try and start wherever possible at zero um, RPM when we start something fresh. Um, dust extractors here and ready, but just be aware that I'm um, not wearing a dust mask so you can hear what I'm saying. That's the only thing. When you're not here, when there's no cameras on me, I've got a full face um, uh, dust um, uh, mask on um, and that covers my eyes as well. Um, I am wearing goggles. Um, if it was a bigger piece then I would be wearing a full face shield. So um, just bear this in mind. If you're just starting out, never underestimate what's gonna happen. Don't just think you can go onto the lathe um, just do a quick job without any protection on, eye protection or anything like that, it will catch you, so do be careful. So, let's get started. So I'm going to refer to my notes all the time, so my, my line drawing that Finn done here. So we're starting with the base. In this case, the base is 66 mil by 10 mil. So 66 by 10 millimeters. Um, so I've oversized it to begin with. We're going to start off with a set of O'Donnell jaws. These are the 112, so OD112. Okay, and we're going to hold this piece on the inside. Okay, inside of that dovetail there. And I'm just going to do a small amount of turning. All I want to do is do another uh, recess on the inside that I can then expand the jaws into. So let's just move the tail stop for a moment. Just put them down to one side. Um, we're going to get some light on. So Finn, now, can you come in nice and close? So we want to get everybody seeing what's going on. I'm working on this face here. Even closer. Let's get, let's really get uh, intrusive and in the action. There we are. Remember guys, I'm working on a phone here. I have got not, have not got lots of expensive kit. Um, but it's working, I think. I think we're getting the information. There we are. So that's nice and close. Um, I'm going to start off with a, a fairly long tool rest. It's just my preference, really. Ask any questions. I'm hoping that I'm going to sort your questions out before you have a chance to ask them. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Could you also mention uh, what height to have the tool rest at with each chisel? Yeah, of course you will. So I'm going to start off with a, a small... Uh, six mil or quarter inch bowl gouge. I'm just going to skim this face here. So we need to be able to get to center point. So there's my center point. Look, to get to center point, I need to have the tool rest below it. And on most pieces of face plate turning, you'll need to do this. You've always got to get to center point when you're doing that. Spindle turning slightly different. And if you're using skew chisels and things like that, then we tend to go higher than center. Um, for a skew. Um, okay, so I want to start thinking about a recess. So in my recess, I can look down the back of the chuck and view that. And I'm going to make a little dovetail recess in there. So a parting tool first off. And this isn't taking too much weight, so I don't have to go too deep. Then I'm going to just do a little drag cut or pull cut within the centre. And the reason I'm doing that, if I pull this way, I'd likely hit the void and then suddenly hit the important edge that I want to retain. So I'm just dragging away from the important areas. And it is a drag cut at the moment, nothing's pretty or clean about it. Now I'll just finish off where I can, bevel rubbing, just push gently up the length of the tool into center. Just wiggle that tip up and down a little bit over that center point to, to do away with it. And then I'm going to go back to a little skew. So I'm going to go with a little 3.8 carbon steel skew. And that's, it's a nice flat skew, this one. It doesn't have a rolled edge, so I can give a nice, get myself a nice crisp um, dovetail. There we are. If you want to put a bit of decoration in, you can. Just shows people that you paid attention and 
let's just do a bit of sand. I'll tell you what, we'll finish this one um, all the way through. So let's start, I'm gonna start with a 240 grit and we'll do then a 400. So just a very light sanding. I'll paint this one afterwards anyway, so I don't want to go to the extremes of getting a 600 grit, otherwise they won't, they won't be that much um, for the paint to adhere to. Paint or dye, I've done a lot of dyeing on this, so wood stains, um, and there's some great wood stains out there at the moment. I tend to use chestnut or hamster sheen, they've got some nice colors, um, right from the vivid colors to pearlescence to um, neons, so really nice soft colors. There we are, so that's that's a quick one. So ooh, a little bit of roughness there, let's get rid of that. There we are, that'll, that'll do us. For what we want and for the speed that we're gonna be turning at, um, or well, sorry, the time span that we've got to turn in, that'll do us for the minute. Now, you guys don't forget, there's no rushing at all. Okay, you're gonna take your time, and do this nice and slowly. So if you remember the diameter of the base, we're working with is 66. Now, I'm gonna give you the diameters, but I might you might find that I'm sort of not measuring too much because, you know, it is a, a, an estimate for you. This give you a, a, a rough idea of sizes, but to be quite honest, 66, it could be 70 mil, doesn't matter, it's a base, it's not critical. So let's take off the glue chuck. And likewise, the thickness here, I've got 10 mil in the plans. It could be 15 mil if you want it to be. It's entirely up to you. You can use a pretty bit of timber, you can use a plain bit of timber. Up to you, depending on whether you're coloring, leaving it bare, all those sorts of things. Yeah, let's not, we don't overthink this too much. So we're just taking off the glue chuck now. There we are. If you were wondering, um, all I'm using is uh, um, my very basic, much used, much loved um, glue gun. It's not anything expensive. It's just a regular glue gun with um, yellow sticks, yellow glue sticks. Um, not sure if I'll pronounce it right, but can you use, I think it's O'Donnell 80. O'Donnell 80? O'Donnell's. O'Donnell's. O'Donnell 80's. Yes, you can. Yeah, just, you might have to just um, sort of change the size to suit, but absolutely. Yeah. So I'm just taking a little bit of that thickness away. It's quite a big lump of timber. Uh, someone's just asking, what is the best wood to use? So this is maple, so it depends whether you're gonna um, stain or dye these bits of timber, or whether you want it to be decorative. So if you look online at uh, Rashomon, um, all the German nutcrackers, you'll have some that are heavily decorated and colored, you'll have some that are natural timber colors. So natural timber colors, do something with nice grain. I think burrs and things like that are probably a bit too much, but something nice, bit of you, bit of nice dark oak, those sorts of things. This, because it's going to be coloured though, this is maple. I use an awful lot of um, sycamore and uh, lime for all of these uh, German decorations. Then I'll just drop in the handle nice and low. That's going to give us a nice skew cut. Now I want that to be dead flat, so I'm just going to use a nice broad skew. Okay, just to flatten that off. Because this has got to sit neatly, so you don't want any recess, any undercut on this at all. You want it to sit nice and nice and neat. Let's just put a little burr on that. I'm just going to use my my trend diamond file just to give a little a little edge. You're 15 minutes in. Thank you, Ben. Let's speed up. So, and then this is going to be sanded. No decoration on the top because we need a nice flat surface. There we go. And this is going to be drilled as well, guys. So I'll give you the measurements for that. But with a pencil, in a minute, we let's pretend that we're going to do a load of, load of sanding in a minute. I'll do a token gesture for you, though. 
just so I don't get a lung full of dust. So let's say we're going to sand, roughly, okay. Before you do anything else, just with a pencil, just scribe your centre point. This is important in a moment. Now that can always be rubbed off at the end, don't worry about that. So there we are, that's our base. There we are. So like I said, ever so easy. Do three or four of them at once. Make make a few. So Finn, can you have the camera on that? I just want to show everybody what I'm doing with the base to get the... So I'm, there's my centre point. So with the pencil, I'm just going to scribe a very faint line across that surface. So that's going to be important later when we drill the two holes to actually fix the legs into. Really important. We need to know exactly where centre is. So we'll mark that and drill it out later. Now what I tend to do is go to the pillar drill. I'm going to position with my dividers. Okay, where we're going to go. And I'll give you that measurement now, just so you've got it straight away. Again, write this down. So the position of our holes, in my case, is going to be, where's my rule? I think a few people were saying the plans are already up on the Facebook page. Fantastic, fantastic. So let's go, we're going to go for 33 mil centers. So from the center of each hole, 33, let's say 34, and that's going to give us a nice even um, number. So 34, all I need to do then is go 17, all right, I'm going to bring the... Uh, 17. So I'm going to go from the center hole out, 17. And then the other side, center hole out, 17. Okay, so there we have our positions of our holes, which I can drill in. And I'll use a lip and spur to do that. Okay, so in fact, let's do it now. We'll put everything together. Okay, so to do... Instead of using the pillar drill, I'll just use my cordless. Okay, now it's safer. Well, it's not so much a safety thing, but to get this accurate, it's better to use a cordless. But just to let you know, if you don't have a cordless, um, the only thing to be careful of here is don't go too far. I don't want to go and hit the bed of my lathe or put a bit of wood underneath. This isn't a, uh, bearing a huge amount of weight, so it doesn't have to be deep. Eight to 10 mil should be enough. Okay, so that's the base. That can be one of many bases done. Okay, so let's move on upwards. So let's go to, um, let's go to the feet whilst we're traveling up through the body. So the feet. Now don't forget, if you miss any of this, if it uh, goes past a little bit quick, then you can always catch up later, either on Instagram or on YouTube, usually up there that, that same night. So we're now going to look at, uh, at the feet. They are slightly different piece. So we're not going to turn the feet. We're actually going to just shape them with a sanding disc. So let's grab one of my sanding discs here. So just on a little faceplate ring, that's going to be attached to the C jaws. In turn, the, the sanding discs are attached to my disc with a hook and loop system. This is a sanding disc, sorry, a, a sanding table um, we, that we used to sell. We now sell, sell round ones. Whatever sanding table you have, you need to make yourself a wooden sacrificial board on top, that's all. So despite the fact we're selling round ones now for the um, Taurus system, doesn't matter. You just make yourself a square board, screw that or glue it to the top and, uh, and you're away. And I use this one an awful lot for this sort of thing, for that, uh, for any of this square shaping. Now, Finn, I think we will have the dust extraction on in a minute, in a minute, because um, we got to make 
Okay, we're going to make out of our little square piece, this is line, little square pieces here, we want to end up with some little feet. Remember we're not being overly accurate with, uh, in terms of um, you know, looking exactly like feet, that's a, an interpretation of what we're going to make. Starts off like that, then a ten pence piece, or a pound coin, whatever, you have in your pocket, not a pound coin because it's not round anymore. Um, you're going to put a little arc on the side. And then we're just going to sand that to shape. So Finn, would you pop the extractor on? Lay speed to zero to start off with. Nice and close to the sanding disc. Do two or three at once, that's all not production. You don't want to be making hundreds of these that you get you get bored even with a, a fun project like this. Now all I want to do really is just mark center, and I can only do that once I've sanded. So I'm going to use my marking gauge. I'm just going to scribe each side. You won't see what I'm doing at the moment, but I'll show you show you in two secs. So I've marked there on either side. Okay, so I've got dead centre, then I'm going to come in from the back and I'm going to do the same, just dot where the centre point is. I'll make that a bit bigger for you can, so you can see it, so if I do that with a braddle. Okay, so then we are going to take that to the pillar drill because I need to drill all the way through that one and we'll do the, use the same drill, the little lip and spur. Um, so two feet like that. Now you don't need to see me drilling on the pillar drill, that's what we need to achieve. The drill bit that I'm using is a nice lip and spur and I, I've had these lip and spur bits for quite a long time but you can see that what I mean by lip and spur. It has a point on the centre and then you've got the two wings on the outside. Okay, so it's quite a nice little, cent, uh, little drill and that, uh, that's on a hex shank goes straight into my cordless. So there, two feet. So we've got a base We've got two feet. We're going to start joining all this together with some dowel. So again, if we can focus on that area, then little V block there. I buy um, pre-bought dowel. It's just easier. Um, the pre-made dowel. Sorry. Okay. You see here, then. Okay, and I'm just going to cut the size. So we want to go through the feet and into the base and then be able to grab the legs. We've got one. Don't try this on the bandsaw. Um, you'll have bits of dowel flying everywhere and it can be quite dangerous. But just a little block like this. You can sit and do loads. There we are. Once you've done that, we're going to grab, grab those, start fitting things together. Oh, 
So we have our two feet waiting legs. Okay, so onwards to the legs. So the legs, again, I needed to do a little bit of prep of that because I didn't want to take you back and forward to the pillar drill all the time. So now we're going to go through to, um, it's between centre turning. So our legs are going to end up looking, looking like this. Okay, just fairly short pieces of timber and they already have holes in either side. It's important that we drill the hole before we do the turning. Otherwise, what you'll find is the hole will always be off centre. So they've been um, already drilled. Now, I've actually used a, um, a pen drilling, a pen blank drilling uh, vice for that. Um, you could turn them on the lathe in, in jaws if you wanted to, but I found the pen uh, vice really easy to use. In fact, Finn, grab me that, the vice on the, the pillar drill there, just to show you the type of thing that we're talking about. Thank you. So it's something like this. Um, you can get these um, uh, via Axminster, they've got a little corner cut out of them there and then basically your square upright pops in there and it makes sure that it stays upright. Okay, make sure that it stays upright, it's just a little lever control here. So that's that. So drill your holes first, then we're going to do some basic turning, very very basic turning. We might as well do it with a skew because we haven't had a chance to use the skew chisel yet. So. Let's get the skew out and tail stop needs to go back on. See what I mean about changing things around on the lathe, but it's really, really good for work holding. It helps sort of solve some of those problems. It, it's sort of problem solving on the lathe. This sort of project is quite good um, for experimental turning, playing around with different types of work holding. So we're going to come away. I had a a, a ring center in there. I need to change. I need to go to a single pointed center. And we're going to go for that one, just a regular 90 degree. And in the other end, now you may not have seen one of these, you may have. Um, we're going to go for a light pull drive. It's just a staggered center basically. It's got several diameters on it. And so, whatever the diameter of that hole, that will fit up there nicely. That'll fit there nicely. We're turning between centers through friction. Short at all rest now, because it's a dinky little bit of timber. Lay speed is zero. Turn the speed up quite quick. And be up above 2000 revs. And let's go, um, nice big skew. We're just going to rough down first. With friction drives, you will get a little bit of slippage. They settle down after a while, so don't worry too much. So we want to make sure they're the same size. So you can use your parting tool for that. The dimensions of these, we're going to be looking at our legs, 22 mil by 45 mil. If you miss the whole size, the whole size is 6 mil. So 22 diameter, 45 in length. You're half an hour through. Half an hour through. Yeah. So 22. I'm just going to set my. Calipers. There we are. So that's going to be the fattest part, and then we're going to taper down to the foot. And then I'm going to clean each side up. I need to make sure that when this rests on the base, it rests square, and when it rests on the top, it does the same. There we are. Then sand and seal, do what you need to do. There we have one leg in waiting. Would a pen mandrel do the same thing? 
Um, no, because there's no liner in our bits of timber here. We've only got the basic bit of timber, so you get a lot of slop. Um, use a centre of some sort. So most of you will have um, a tailstock single point centre. Um, if you don't have one of those, something like something like we've got uh, here, or even an engineering centre. Something like that, they are single pointed, that sort of thing, much, much better. And you won't only use it once, it's not just this type of project I use this on. Um, this is used through lots of things, you know, where you've got a hole first, it's the same sort of way of, of holding. Right, we'll measure our diameter, so quick clean two. Remember that's then going to be the fatter of the edges, fatter, fatter end, and we'll taper down. And I'm just going to grab the other one just to make sure we're still on the same track. Clean up the edges. And we need to make sure they're the same length exactly as each other. Well, luck, they are. So there we go. So that's our legs. Very simple bit of turning, that one. There we are. We're looking pretty good so far. So right now, we're going to create a little rest for, um, for our... Um, cones to go on. Now that little rest, that little base, actually fits underneath and in here and that has four holes in it. Two holes to join onto the legs and two holes as vents for air to travel up through when the, um, the cone is lit inside to let the smoke come out the top of the smoker. Okay, I'm just going to grab the picture to show you what the eventual um, look is like. Okay, so this wasn't photoshopped. This wasn't Photoshop, this is actual smoke coming out of the mouth, okay? Um, so the vents are under here, so we need to make that now. So if we remember uh, what our whole centers were, okay, we're gonna repeat that on one of these. So this is the actual piece we're gonna make now. Okay, so let's get rid of some of these tools a minute. take out um, our center and we're just going to replace it with another type and now I'm going to go back to a fairly large piece or fairly large drive because now I'm going to drive um, an, another piece of line we're going to create a cylinder here then I'm going to hold that in the chuck and then part off our um, cone holder Okay, so I've already centered this up with the marking gauge. All I need to do now is just put a little brattle point in. And I'm literally just gonna create a little foot one side so we can part off maybe two or three of those holders. Lay speed back down to zero. Tool rest below center, just, you can be anything up to sort of six mil below works. Get too much lower than that, the roughing gouge, or, or if you're using a roughing gouge, the wings start to grab a little bit, so don't go too low. Um, speed on this one, I'm gonna go between 16 and 1800. We'll start with a roughing gouge, down the cylinder first. Dimensions on this piece. Fifty-three mil. We're going to go, and again, I've given it a ten mil uh, thickness, but it's entirely up to you. There we are. 
So that's the rocking gouge. Now we can just clean that up with a parting tool. So readjust tool rest. Don't change the height. The height can stay the same. Now I'm just going to clean this face up so it fits in the chuck nicely. There we are. We'll use the C jaws. My my go-to set of jaws. So optimum size on a C jaw internal <coughs> is um, 58 mil. Grab my dividers. Sorry, calipers. What am I doing? Come on. Um, could you pre-drill the holes before turning and parting? On this piece that we're doing now, you you, you could. Um, yeah, I don't see why not. Can't see any issues. Anyway, we're just going to size this. So look, we're not putting the piece, the um, calibers all the way over at the moment. I'm just giving myself a bit of a guide. So I can see the, the point of the calipers further away from me. I can see when the wall of timber comes close. And then it pops over. All right, so nice and gentle. No need to be too heavy handed with that type of cup. So that's all ready for the chuck. One side. Chuck can go back on. Don't forget guys, like I said, if this is all going a bit quick, you can re-watch it as many times as you like. Either on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And there we are. It's a lovely grip now, nice and firm. We'll start by cleaning up that that end grain surface. Bowl gouge again, so where we started off basically, same slight type of thing. I'm below centre and nice clean finish. And I'm going to do the same thing again. So I've given myself a dimension, you've got it on your line drawings. 53 mil. Um, what is the biggest diameter you would use a skew? Um, there is no, there's no limit to the diameter that you use. I will confess, the larger you go in diameter, the harder it will be to, um, to you. So you need to be practiced. And in practicing, I wouldn't go any bigger than about sort of 75, three inches, four inches maybe. In If you're a newbie to skew work, um, I would practice more, get good on sort of um, 50 mil, so, so two inches. Get good on that and then increase the sizes slowly. Okay, um, skew work is just a practiced um, skill. So let's go my 50. Three mil, same thing. Now don't worry, because we're going to make the hole match this. So if you go a bit smaller, it don't matter. Let's go with the gouge, just for speed. Now, now we've got the diameter. Just getting rid of some of that bulk material. We'll do a couple more cuts with the parting tool. There we are. A little bit of sanding maybe we're not going to do too much here but then when you're ready we can part off let me just put a little pencil mark there actually before i do otherwise i'm going to lose my center that's my center There we 
something else. We have one. Might as well wash them here. Let's do another one. Again, you can sand that if you want to. Okay then, right, now we're making proper progress. So let's pick the cleanest one. So we're going to go with that one to start with. Okay, there's my, my base. And we're going to do a, once again, line across there. Now, I'm not overly fussy here. I'm going to go try and get as, as right angled I can to that first line because don't forget we need four. It's not crucial though. It doesn't have to be exact. All right. Um, and then we're going to use our dividers once again. I can't remember what the whole centers were. I was using 34, I think. Let me just double check that. That's it. We went to 34 to round things up, didn't we? So 34. Bit of scrap wood, Finn, just behind the planer there. That's it, lovely. I'm gonna scrap bit of wood now because I'm gonna drill right through this one. Okay. There, I want my six mil. Drill bit. And go there. Now I'm gonna put 17 mil on my dividers again. And I'll do the same on every line. Hold all the way through. Again, to <coughs> a pillar drill would work better. Or 45 minutes in. Oh, there's that bit. Right, so that's where we are at the moment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start rushing a little bit now because Finn's just reminded me how far we're in. Let's get another bit of down. I'll put one in there for the minute. Obviously we need a second piece in there, that's going to go there, they're going to join together and these are our two vent holes. So now we need to make our top. Our top is going to be one of these, probably the most complex part of the whole thing. There are some holes sanded, there is a vent hole that's going to go straight through the head as well for let the, the smoke travel through, but basically that's going to sit on top um, as is that one. Okay, so let's go through the, the start of that. That's going to give you a lot of food for thought for before Thursday. There's lots going on here. So again, I'm using maple. We're going to go back to between centre turning. I'm going to do the same sort of thing. I'm going to hollow the centre out first and then turn to the hollow. go with a, a nice big pro drive again so there's your pro driver I've used those a fair bit in our projects 
over the last few weeks. Now I'm going to go to a ring sensor, so back to that double ring, so we have a ring around a point. I've centered up already, so we're, we're nice and centered. Um, dimensions for this one are um, overall length 75 mil um, by so we've got an internal hole of 53 to match. So you're looking around about 65 external hole, uh, external piece here. Um, I'm going to make it work. That's what I'm going to do. So slow or zero with your lay speed to start with. Then we're going to turn it up about 14 to 1600 will be my speed here. I'll start with the rock and gouge. All smokers are nice and plump. There we are, that's perfect. So we wanna have it nice and fat. Um, I'm gonna just create a little foot for my sea jaws here. Now we can put the seed jaws back on. Now all of these things can be prepped up in advance. You can do two or three at a time. There we are. Right, so this is the hollow. This is the underside. I need to make that fit, that little cone holder that I've just made. So my first job is to size it. So let's go bowl gouge first, clean that surface. Okay, just, just for the minute. Now, double check, re-measure my cone Holder. So we are 53. Okay, so I'm just re-measuring that bit there. 53. And this doesn't need to be tight, guys, because you want to be able to put the top on once you've lit the cone, put it on the cone holder. You don't want to be sort of wiggling things around. So there's my 53. No, you don't want to be sort of screeching it on and off, otherwise you'll start knocking things off. So um, let's go bowl gouge. We'll clear out some of the waste first. I'm going to drill down through this in a second though. Now I'm going to make my little recess nice and square. And don't forget, it's got to be deep enough to take the, the cone holder. Just to depth gauge really. Um, 
and I'm going to measure the overall length. We might as well go as big as we can because there is a limit to how deep we can go. Obviously, um, I want to make this 75 mil in total um, in outside dimension, outside dimension. So I'm going to drill in to about there. So I'm going to measure that. I'm going to get a drill bit. Let's go say, I don't know, um, something like, what have we got in here? Let's go, that's about a 10 mil bit. And this is just a twist drill. This is just one I quickly grabbed out of the drawer there. So we're going to go in 65 mil. And this is my do not pass line. Lay speed wants to be slow. So don't go above a thousand revs when you're drilling. Um, this sort of type of thing anyway, otherwise you get awful lot of screeching. There we are, that's up to that line. So that's now my guidance. That's, like I said, that's my do not pass line. So before I go any further, I want to make sure that this whole mechanism is going to fit inside and it fits in nicely and it's it's sunk in nicely as well. So now I can start doing the actual hollowing. You can scrape this out, you can use a bowl gouge, you can do whatever you want to do this. So if, you know, if we come in at an, an angle, and I'm up now, I'm about 16 to 1700. I'm gonna, that's it. So I'm looking to that line now to give me some guidance. Tell me how far I've got to go. Is that in the way of the camera, bud? Yeah, just a little bit. Let's move it until it isn't. That's All it. right? Yep. <laughs> There's the bottom of the hole, so we'll stop the lathe, have a look. So we might want to just slightly refine that shape. How long have we been going, Ben? Uh, you're coming up to 55 minutes. 55 minutes, right then. Right, I'm not going to mess around with that anymore. We can sand that now, of course. That's the inside. I would like it to be a little bit more bulbous on the inside, a little bit uh, wider, but we're running low on time as usual. So we're going to carry on. I can now turn that over. Don't worry, it won't fit in there. So we might have to go back to, we might have to go back to our um, ODs. Yeah, we'll go back to our ODs. OD 112s in this case, remember. If you're struggling with, with the size um, that's going to fit, there's, there's pretty much a jaw to suit all, you know, even if you, you had a really odd size that wasn't, nothing was going to fit, then go to something like a friction chuck, that would be the best thing, so a wooden friction chuck, that will work. Just yeah. bring the light up a little bit more, just Sorry, a touch. Sorry guys, yeah, yeah that's there it. we are. So look, now I'm free, now I've got so much space to do what I want, so we've got literally just a couple of minutes to go guys, so whilst I'm doing this, I'm going to just explain a few things, so we've got next section of this project to be done on Thursday we're making this shape now this sort of body shape don't worry the sanding is going to be done on Thursday as well glaze speed to zero new set of jaws and new hold and then slowly turn that glaze speed up then we can get back up to 1600 revs so let's just do I'll go to go to a, a 38 bowl gouge High spot's going to be about there.
there we are. I think we're around about there. We'll just make that a little bit more pointed. That was your point to start sanding. Okay, and I would, depending on what you're gonna do, if you're gonna um, put a stain on this later on, then um, I would leave the ceiling for the moment, but Finn, can you come up? So at the moment we are, we're on us at the moment, but we're certainly not legless. Okay, so we have our legs. So we've got our stand, feet, legs, um, uh, cone holder, and the body. We're gonna sand, uh, the body on Thursday, create the head, uh, we're going to create the arms and hands and um, tools as well, turning tools, as well as hopefully we'll get a lathe made at the same time. So print off your copy um, of the drawings and you can see them on Facebook. Um, alternatively, they're going to be on the knowledge post on Monday. Um, start prepping your timber, um, start making the bits we've started making so far. Have a fantastic day or couple of days turning. Until then, same place, same time, four o'clock on Thursday. Uh, I've been Colin Way. Bye bye. See you again.